um, transport in my ambulance, uh, immobilizing anybody that might have severe fractures or possibility of C-spine injury. Um, backboard is, is still appropriate for those types of injuries. And we would prepare our equipment also. We have a stretcher that loads and unloads. We don't always unload it depending on what type of surface we're landing on. If it's a roadway, um, unloading a, a stretcher is fairly, fairly simple to be moving it on a smooth road. But the stretcher, if we're going to be bouncing across the field, might not be the easiest thing. Uh, so, depending on how big our patient is, too, uh, how much stability we need underneath it, but we may need three or four of you guys to help load them. So, if you come over this way, we do have an enclosed tail rotor, which makes it, makes it much more safer to operate around. Uh, we still don't want you going back there and maybe getting sucked in or moving around it and getting hurt in any way, because it can happen. The other thing that you want to be aware of is any hats, helmets, any glasses that might be on your head or anything like that that can get blown. We saw our wind when we came down and it blew everything. Be prepared for that. If we're on a dusty area, you can get what's called brownout, which will totally, it, we won't be able to see the land very easily either. You guys won't be able to see and it can and get to be a little bit dangerous in that situation. So let us know um, those things. But as you're coming back here to, to help um, load, be aware that this is very hot back here. And when you're coming back, especially if you're right here, you're just like a blast. And back here is where you would go. And this is where we have to on everything. This is our structure that does come in and out easily. Um, the only thing that, that we need to be aware of, and I'll just show you here in a moment, is um, most of the time the medics don't like a whole lot of assistance because there tends to be um, the thought process that we need lifting help. Um, we need stabilizing help not so much the lifting help. Maybe some of us women like a little bit of support, but if you lift too high, you can actually get that cot jammed in there, and then we can't unload it. <laughs> we get to the hospital and we're like stuck with a patient stuck in there, and it's an awkward situation. So, um, so I'll have you guys help in just a minute, a bit, little bit. You'll see how easily it loads. When there is a bigger patient on board though, it's, it's just more or less just stabilizing as we push them in. Uh, the, the, the weight that we can take on this helicopter varies depending on the crew and the equipment size uh, and how much fuel we have on board, that sort of thing. If you let us know a patient weight beforehand, we can pre-plan and adjust some of the, sometimes we can run a little bit and use off some fuel and get a larger patient. But we are still limited by the 400 pound cot restriction. Um, when I was talking earlier about bringing the patient over, if you've got them on a backboard, we can bring them over and then just, we have the, the stretcher cleared off and you can slide the backboard in. We don't even have to take this out, which is a lot of, it's fairly easy. It's, a lot of times more easier than taking them out and trying to switch them over. But we can also take them out and line your cot up and switch them over that way too. For there to be a nice specific number, um, just as we prepare, uh, we like to see as many people coming away towards us as they do going away so that we know when we're all clear to take off. So. When the medics get ready, they'll say, okay, who's going to help load? And then we take our time, make sure everybody's prepared, got your hats off, nothing that's blown around, no blankets that are loose, uh, nothing that could get caught in, in the wind of the rotor. And what I like to do is usually have four people. And if I've got four of you guys coming towards the helicopter, 
now I've got a specific number and I know that nobody else is going to be um, coming and getting in any of danger. Alright, so come over here. The, the medic, and I'm pretty sure this is true of every crew member, <laughs> likes to be at that foot end. So if we start out up here, it's just because we're going to lift the front wheels in. And you see how the wheels that are up in the air here kind of roll. Right? And then, as long as this is stabilized and won't roll out down here, this is where we're going to collapse it. Um, the nurse a lot of times will get in and help to guide it in and, and any equipment that they're on. All it requires is just for it to be even and level, and then it pushes and the wheels collapse as they push. So, you can imagine then, really, the, the, the most we need is pushing it help. You just keep it even and then in. And it'll go in and it'll lock. Because if you come up and you, you know, something might be on your helmet, it might be a hard piece or something. If you puncture any part of this, then we're, yeah, yeah we're pretty much screwed. So that's the big thing with wearing helmets <coughs> and stuff back here and just watching your head and watching what you're doing.